Greetings, holy ones. I am Fabian with CrystalsAvatar.com, and today we'll be talking about how the extraterrestrial race, called the Marduk Anunnaki, from the planet Nibiru, have used crystal technology and scalar energy to mutate the DNA of humans and all Earth species, creating this like horrific genetic distortion within our bodies and our consciousness. Now, I have placed time codes in the video description below. So if you guys, any of you want to skip right to the part about the Anunnaki and their battle star Nibiru, um, please do so. But for the rest of you, um, I will first lead up to that point in the beginning to explain a few things first. Now, here's what we're going to be um, covering in today's video. The fraud of the Darwinian theory, the fraud of the Big Bang theory, about the fraud of the New Age movement, also about the fraud of, gene you know, of genetics and DNA. Um, these are the things that we'll be talking today about today in today's video. So thank you for being here. And I can, you know, and consider subscribing to this, this channel if you like what you hear and want to learn more about spiritual awakening, because that's what we talk about here on Crystal's Avatar. And so there's a few regulars here, but if you're if you're new, welcome. <laughs> so we're in the middle of a big, like big, big drama right now on this planet. It's not a drama that started yesterday. It's an ancient drama that started in the period of time that is known as the Atlantean period. Now we hear legends of Atlantis coming in, you know, in our cultures these days. And it's still like a fictional place in like terms of mainstream experts telling us what our past was notice they're uh, telling us and we're accepting <laughs> some of us now mainstream experts uh, base their interpretation of what they think our past was you know on records and bones and uh, that they have found uh, but uh, you know they're, they're basically literally guesses they have made you know as to what those might be if you put them like together in certain ways so right now our cultures are being fed through these mainstream science and they're being fed like partial facts and guesses you know as if they were absolute truth okay as if they were proven when in fact the assumptions that science frequently comes up with by looking at evidence but not having any idea what to compare it to, we're being taught like assumptions, you know, as core truths. And we're learning to, well, some of us uh, accept that. And we're willing to like accept even that we came out of animals, <laughs> probably apes, the Darwinian theory. But now there's a like a little argument in the scientific community. Uh, so maybe it wasn't out of apes, but rather something that like swam in the water, okay? Once upon a time. And then we grew limbs and hands and things. Uh, you know, our flippers became limbs and we walked up on land and we became air breathers. <laughs> and the real one, the Big Bang Theory, if you look at that one, it takes us right back to, well, we started out as pond scum, they say. And, and somehow we, we managed to manifest ourselves in water, then up on land, and, well, here we are. <laughs> the next generation of, well, it must have been a progression through, from pond scum to fish thing to ape thing, you know. And, and then into what we call human. <laughs> if you look at the amount of stretch it takes and, like, like, concepts to come up with that idea, as your core truth, uh, you get like some idea what science is doing right now. And there are reasons why science is doing what it is doing. And those reasons won't be identified, well, in particularly this video, um, because that gets into something called Illuminati. I'm sure some of you have heard of that and learned a little about what they are. Um, they are a body of people on this planet that have been doing things with information like our history or science or our religions okay they've been doing things for many thousands of years in order to control large amounts of people in a negative way 
And we will talk about the Illuminati a whole lot more, but now we're going to talk about what is most important to you as a person um, first, okay? Before we deal with like the big picture drama, because this is what we're in the middle of right now even, okay, in modern times and in our politics and in just history. Uh, because believe me, you will want to know all of this, this stuff before you find out uh, what we're in the middle of right now. So, like, doesn't scare you to death? I mean, there's no reason to be afraid of this big picture drama. Um, and, well, especially if you already know the solutions. So here, we're going to give you the solutions first. You know, the solutions have to do with understanding uh, what your body is, what your mind is, okay? What consciousness is, where you, as spirit, you know, where is that located? And there's a, the soul is tangible, okay? We can point and show and measure. <laughs> so you can start to have a better understanding, uh, you know, a better life experience here. So now this is what you would call like divine holographic blueprint. And it's a healing. It's, and it's the beginning process of learning how to do this because we will learn literally the anatomy the, the structure of our anatomy on 15 dimensions, not three, not seven, 15. It's also, well, it's also your identities. And uh, it's funny because if you look at science again, you know, they have all sorts of theories. Uh, there's the unified theory. There's the quantum theory. You know, theory implies guess because we don't know. Uh, this information that is being presented here today, you will be shown the structure of 15-dimensional physics. You will be shown the structures, the densities that exist within those structures, okay, that allow us to create what's called the hologram of matter, this whole system, this matrix, like a matrix. It's called the time matrix, and this is not a theory. And scientists w would, you know, I'd love to argue with me and, well... How do you know it's not a theory? Everything is a theory. Uh, no, it isn't. <laughs> Fortunately, there are levels of reality um, where there are beings and levels of reality that have not been involved with the distortions in consciousness, okay, and biology that have taken place on this planet, okay, who have held the records, uh, who have held the original creation records that, like, literally detail the, the spiritualized science by which creation itself is brought into manifestation, okay? By a common source intelligence that many people choose to call God. Excuse me. So, but, it, you know, it's not a God that sits on a big throne and has a white beard. It's a consciousness. We were created in the image of God. That doesn't mean we're all men. <laughs> that was a man twist, okay? Humans created that one. Uh, we were created in the image of God as consciousness, as spirit, as energy that is self-aware. So we are going to learn about the, the structure of you know, how we, as self-aware energy, got ourselves like into this predicament you know, of being stuck in a mortal body. Okay, um, We're going to learn 15-dimensional structures. And I will teach you this, okay, to you as an absolute, not as a theory. Now, you have the absolute free will choice, right, to take anything I say and consider it a theory, a guess, or a belief, as opposed to something, you know, that is known. But in my life, and in my world, and the guardians as well, we are guardians, some of you are indigos, but we, you know, these things are known. So I teach you with a lot of conviction, because I am not teaching you guesses. Excuse me. Um, I am teaching you what I know and have found to be true. Uh, and what has happened on this planet to everybody is that we have lost our power. Right now, <laughs> we walk in a, roar, a world that it appears to inflict itself on us. You know, from the moment we take our first breath, we, like, appear to be in a world that happens to us not you know not a world that we create okay we appear to have 
like all sorts of things coming at us constantly. And that is a very real appearance when you're stuck here. But we, you know, we start to realize the framework of reality. You're receiving this information again. We're remembering this, the, the reality that is creating this. When we start to realize this hologram field, what's that? You know, it's a thought form field. This, this means like uh, theoretically, right? My thoughts should be able to influence, right? Theoretically, well, they do if your DNA imprint was working the way it was supposed to, the way it was designed to work, you know, which we call the divine holographic blueprint. Uh, it's not divine anymore. So this is uh, our original blueprint that Source God created humans to be, the original intention of Source. And you would be able to literally manifest everything into matter with no problem at all. That's what is normal. What we have is not normal. And I talk about this holographic template in my other video. Uh, and you, and I will put a link in that in this here and uh, so you, if you haven't seen that one. So check it out. <laughs> but there are a lot of ascension teachings like out there these days in the what's called New Age movement. You might assume that's a good thing. <laughs> but uh, they will teach you, you know, it's all mind over matter. Just believe this or believe that, you know, and then poof, you know, and there it will be. Well, there's a lot of poofs happening out there where people are still sitting in their chairs. Nobody has demanifested yet. <laughs> Nobody has been like able to like uh, manifest a home like that, you know, like right before them when they only have like two pennies in their pocket. There's a lot of promises being made in the New Age movement with what we call, you know, partial or even just straight up false ascension teachings, you know, that are teaching you like part of the mechanics, you know, the way the mind is indeed supposed to be able to, as a spirit, you know, right, uh, create what is it desires in matter. Okay. But what is not being taught is what is stopping that process. You know, we're assuming it's working. It's not it's not so it's a process you know it's supposed to, it's from working functionally and effectively and where each one of us wouldn't have to worry about life because we would be able to manifest what we desire like that you know there is that manifestation in a moment in an instant but it's not happening okay we can use positive thinking we can use affirmations i am this now i am whole now uh well, I'm demanifesting now, still here, right? You're still here. This is the beginning. Learning to use that mental body, because that's what that is, more effectively, okay? But if we were, you know, if it were that simple, you would demanifest now once you gave the command. The reasons, though, the commands don't jump into immediate action in our 3D world is because there is a distortion taking place between our like mind thought patterns and we as spirit desiring to do something and the chemical realities in the body and the energy realities behind them okay there are distortions taking place in the holographic templates that are taking what our intention is and doing things to it and it ends up like twisted distorted coming out to be something different in the hologram now, we talk about since 25,500 BC, yes, we're that ancient and even more, um, there has been something wrong with the planetary holographic template, the planetary level, you know, the planetary grids, and the way that they are running frequency. There has been a problem in the uh, electromagnetic fields on the planet, and that in turn has created severe mutations in the DNA of humans. I, actually all life forms on the planet it's very sad it's it's disgusting it's horrible you know when you learn about what happened here some of you will be appalled i know i was i was like speechless you know for a while at the magnitude of the technology at the will of the ill intention that has been like orchestrated on this planet and the magnitude of the technology itself it makes everything, you know, all the technology, you know, things that we have on the planet right now look like kindergarten, child's play. We're talking about advanced ET species, okay? These are not 
I mean, these are technologies that have the ability to like reverse the orbital pattern of planets and around suns, you know, do we even imagine doing this? Which is, you know, what has been done to planet Nibiru already. The technologies that were done here, if they are not healed during this Stargate opening cycle, that's what we're in, um, there is going to be major problems. They will cause pole shift because of mutations in, in the planetary grids. Pole shift equals extinction of life. It's a serious matter. And, and the cause of Earth's planetary grid mutation is something called the Niberian Dyadic Crystal Grid, which is a, a hideous reverse mathematical program and technology, like using like giant pylon crystals, sort of like the ones in inner Earth. And it's a photosonic standing wave crystalline technology that was installed in Earth's Templar, like Earth's planetary grids, um, way back in 25,500 BC in our Atlantis period. And it was done, like, specifically by one of the extraterrestrial races from Nibiru, the Marduk Necromaton Luciferian Anunnaki. Also, well, they're also from Sirius A and Alpha Centauri. Now, they are a hybrid Anunnaki that's been involved in some of our human dramas. A hybrid as an Anunnaki plus Draconian. That's what a Marduk Anunnaki is. They are the, like, race line that sees control of Nibiru and also the D4 solar stargate. There's several stargates, that's an important one, this, the one in the sun. So remember also that planet Nibiru is actually the secret planet that is part of our solar system. But, you know, it is in a, a manipulated elliptical orbit. That's why we don't see it, or our scientists don't see it, you know. It's measurable, some people have measured it and proved it, but, you know, it's been referred to before as planet X. And this is where most of the Anunnaki that are involved in our dramas are coming from. Not too far away. Not from some distant like civilization, right? So it's been under guardian control before the Nibiru and way back in the day, but however these Luciferian Anunnaki took it over during this time. And please watch my Anunnaki video because I, I talk a lot about the different types of Anunnaki races because there's several different ones from different um, sources. So um, different planets and, and systems so but I've also have explained in my um, like other videos that the word Lucifer is not something that is from Earth it's actually comes from Lulatan which is a specific family of Anunnaki and the Luciferi like the Luciferian rebellion was this event in which the Marduk Anunnaki seized control of Nib planet Nibiru then so now in this period of time the Nibirian dotted crystal grid was set up and this was the beginning. This was like set up actually Stonehenge in England. And, and this is what was way before those standing stones, you know, were there. But they were getting this grid installed. It was a series of like 24 uh, major crystal pylons, you know, giant crystals that like the size of buildings. And there was 12 that were put in, on Earth and 12 that were put in parallel Earth. Okay, and I talk about parallel earth here, but so 24 crystal pylons all together. Now this Niberian grid carries this hideous reverse frequency program via this uh, 24 Niberian crystal temple complexes that exist beneath earth's crust, kind of like those underground bases. Okay, and of course there are 24 primary Illuminati underground control bases that are located at these same sites. Now. There was this very, it's a very elaborate setup of technology done in order to get the, like, this Niberian, excuse me, the Niberian grid to work. These were being linked, like, frequency-wise. And, and there was a link, you know, being made to the planet Nibiru um, through what's called the Battlestar Nibiru, which was called Wormwood in the Bible. There is record of this. There's something about this. So the Battlestar Nibiru isn't a planet. It's a piece of a planet that was captured in Nibiru's orbit by the technologies they have, you know, kind of like in Star Wars, the tractor beam. So, and, and it was like turned into literally a, a, like a battle planet where inside of it is like living quarters. So it's an artificially constructed thing and it's bigger than Earth is. <laughs> what the Marduk Anunnaki were able to do um, is they were able to like connect the battle star into the, this Nibirian grid 
and progressively reverse part of like Earth's Merkaba field, you know, and make it an artificial like Merkaba link from the Earth's grid up through the solar stargate, which they also reversed, and then they had control of you know through reversing part of the solar Merkaba and into and into the the Wormwood Battlestar Nibiru. All these things connected, and then into you know the Nibirian planetary matrix. So very very sophisticated technology. These beings are intelligent, evil, dark, but intelligent. And this is how they, well, initially got full control over our Earth's planetary grids. And this Nibarian dietic crystal grid, this major colossal technology that they have going all over, uh, it was like a photosonic program that blocks and reverses the polarity in a number of Earth's like axial tonal lines, you know, and ley lines, you know, grid networks, creating some like frequencies to become dormant in Earth's planetary shields. And through the Niberian dyadic crystal grid technology, like Earth was like forced into like a pole shift during Atlantis, and its orbit was like that's when it became artificially misaligned with the reverse orbit of planet Nibiru. <laughs> so Earth is now, even now, on a reverse orbit, and the Niberian mutation has like completely distorted this natural relationship between a person and planet okay the electromagnetic relationship and when within earth's natural like orbital and axis alignment also with the universal stargates this causes all kinds of problems it's also blocked the natural activation of the human dna template and that of the earth species all earth species creating like this horrific genetic distortion and under natural conditions without this distortion you know, a fully activated Merkaba allows a human the ability of healthful <laughs> biological longevity, you know, and local teleportation via like the natural planetary portals on a planet. And, you know, also a properly functioning Merkaba is also essential for embodiment of the higher dimensional spiritual consciousness and interdimensional perception. Okay, we don't have that now, do we? And most, most planet. And for also immortal biological longevity, who doesn't want immortality, you know? And for later a formation of the interdimensional Merkaba vehicle, vehicle of light, through which interdimensional atomic transmutation, you know, for off-planet stargate passage and bodily, that's, you know, bodily dimension ascension, that's what it's called, can be achieved. We would achieve that, no problem. Well, not anymore, not after this like Nibirian, medit you know, mutation. And there was a time when life on Earth had what is called a variable based genetic code. That means the genetic alphabet, which are, you know, the chemical components of the DNA, you know, chains, were once, once made of a different amount of chemicals for each living thing. Every living thing had their own um, combination. And for example, a frog would have like one amount of chemical combinations. A human would have a different amount. A tree would have also a different amount, another amount. But right now, <laughs> scientists were amazed to find that they started to get into, you know, when they started to learn about the DNA and the genetics, that everything appears to have what's called a, a base four. Well, it's not, you know, strange to them, but it's, there's a base four genetic alphabet that literally, you know, chemicals that combine into different combinations are what make up the gene code of all things. All things now are on four, for this space four. So they assume that this is this is the way it is. They assume that's normal. Uh, that is not normal. This whole planet right now is under an intentional base four mutation. It's not nature. That's not the way it is, was. And it's called the Nibirian DNA mutation in reference to planet Nibiru. That is, you know, being caused because of a distortion in the electromagnetic fields because of this this whole technology that they're using against us you know against the planet now eventually we're going to learn how an electromagnetic field distortion on the planet could actually affect the dna of life forms and you know how that could actually happen because um we are going to learn about something called the planetary life force interface system and it's basically a system you know which primal life force currents come through you know from source god 
it comes through this universal matrix, the, the galactic matrix, the planetary matrix, the, the, our matrix, you know, into our bodies. This is the route of life force energy it takes, you know, to get here, to get to us and all other lives on the planet. And it's all, and it's, notice it comes through the planet. So when there's something wrong with the planet's grids, well, we're not getting that pure, divine life force energy. This is how, you know, we have our consciousness connection to the primal energy currents, which is the primal consciousness and intelligence of Source God. The, these energies are supposed to, like, flow in a very specific way, normally. You know, we're supposed to get life force energy fed to us from the planet. This is how our spirit, like, downloads into the body. Primal energy currents go through the planetary grids and into our fields, but because the planetary grids have been damaged, our Mother Earth Tara Gaia here, our planet is ill, and it has been ill since 25,500 BC, okay? Actually, before this, but the real illness set in then. And this mutation has existed in the gene code that has blocked out most of the DNA. It's done, you know, that by blocking out most of the DNA template that we have. So we are going to learn what a DNA template is as opposed to the chemical DNA that our scientists look at. We're going to learn about the body's systems, okay? The interwoven subtle energy systems like chakras and meridians and axiotonal lines, things called hoover bodies and 12 tree grids, okay? Also crystal seals um, and that are all part of the regulatory system of the DNA template, all of which work together to create you know, what manifests the chemical DNA chains. We're learning about all this so we can know how to make a change in it. And the reason we are stuck down here is because most of our DNA has been turned off, like a light switch. You know, I talk about that 10%. What science looks at now and what, what you know, they call junk DNA, it's not junk, but which are sequences of DNA that appear to be, you know, not to produce proteins, they appear to be dormant, and not do anything, but they just sit there in the DNA chains. Uh, well, they didn't always sit there. Once upon a time, they were filled with things that created chemicals, created proteins, created building blocks for life. As we work with our holographic template, we will be able to like trace okay, where the distortions are. And we don't need a laboratory to begin the process of well, reverse mutation of our own human genome, okay? Reverse, which means like bringing it back to its original base 12 potential, not some crippled base 4, okay? Base 12 means that there are 12 chemical components that make up the DNA chains on a physical level. It meant there are 12 strand templates on the subtle body levels, and that when it works right, they come into manifestation, manifest those necessary missing chemicals, and with those chemicals, we are able to hold 12 dimensions of consciousness, which is the consciousness of what is known as a Christos avatar. Remember, avatar is a level of consciousness, okay? I will show you again on my matrix diagram. We were all born to be avatars. We were born to be, well, some of us ascended masters, and we will talk a little bit, uh, you know, in this video series about indigo children. Now, that's a buzzword in the New Age movement, right? <laughs> um, the same as like, uh, you probably heard of like crystal children, um, rainbow children, so, but indigo children, they're special or something. What are they? <laughs> um, they're a human form, first of all. Okay, they look like us. They're, they're here with us. Hello, Indigo. <laughs> um, they are, um, you know, what, what they are. Okay, they are human form, but they have a DNA template that goes beyond this 12 strands. Because uh, that's pretty cool, right? 12 strands. But they, go, they have from 24 to 48 strand potential. Because, why? Because that seems like overkill. But we come here as a part of a, a rescue mission. They are Lyran, Syrian species of human. I make a lot of videos about Lyrans, Syrians, okay? Um, this is a consciousness that came to help reset the holographic templates of DNA on this planet, K, 
okay? Most people who are drawn to this work are indigo children. Some of you are indigo children. It's not just some lofty concept. Like I said, this is all tangible, measurable, okay? But the indigos, they don't know it. The indigos don't know they're indigos until they wake up. Um, humans, you know, the earth seeds, they don't know they're supposed to be angelic until they wake up. The earth seeds, you know, so we're supposed to help them because we're all, actually, we're all stuck down here wondering, hmm, what do I do with myself next? <laughs> you guys, I thank you for watching this video about the DNA mutation of humans and earth, well, all living things, created by the Anunnaki. Thank you <laughs> from Planet Nibiru. If you like what you have learned today in this video, and we're going to talk more about it, um, please like and subscribe. And you definitely want to like click wherever that is <laughs> on the video that comes up on the screen here, because in that video, we're going to be going, you know, to be talking about consciousness, death and dying, immortality, about the Bible and the sinner concept about the ancient origins of the this guardian teachings you know the, the where did it come from the law of one and inner crystals from 20 you know like was it 240,000 bc okay we're ancient thank you for being here you guys see you in the next video in the series peace namaste holy ones machiwa